Hello, my name is Heather Smith and uh, today in our free online training uh, with Zero, I am going to run through cash coding which is uh, an element of bank reconciliations in Xero. Uh, so you can visit me at heathersmithsmallbusiness.com and I am a writer and a Xero certified advisor. So here we have the Xero dashboard and for the purposes of today's session I want you, I am using the demo company and I'm going to click in on the ANZ business account here and you can see that uh, we have various tabs across the top and the tab I'm going to look at today is cash coding. So this is the demo account which you can access yourself. So here's the cash coding. Now this is a really exciting and productive area because you can see that it's set up very much like a, a spreadsheet and you can move very quickly within it. So let me highlight a few uh, of the quick productive ways that you can move within uh, this area. So I'm just going to click here on mobile and I've got all these options here. If I use the shift and tab key, it will allow me to move to the previous cell. So I'll show you that. Oh, I have to be in here, sorry. Shift and tab key allows me to move to the previous cell. If I use, come over here, if I use the enter key, it allows me to move down one row. So I click back in here. So that allows me to move down quickly. Uh, if I bring up another option here, let's move them all. I just wanted to highlight these different options. If I use the tab key, that moves me forward. Tab, so that's I think quite obvious. Tab forward, tab and shift back. Tab, shift back. And finally, the, the fourth option I have here, if I use the shift and enter key, it moves me up one row. So shift, enter, if I click in here, shift, enter, moves up, enter, moves down. Sensational. So really uh, have a quick go at using the shortcut keys which will allow you to move around quicker within uh, this product. I find in my travels people who use shortcut keys are normally faster than people like me who use the mouse. So what we have here are the transactions. If you remember from the very first screen here, uh, you have all the transactions that have actually fed in from the bank statement. So they may have fed in or they may be imported. And again, uh, here we have them. We have the opportunity to put further information in here. So uh, if we grab this very first one, um, I will highlight before I go on and look at the actual transaction that each column I can sort. So I can grab each column and I can sort it. Uh, there's nothing in the references so that didn't make it much ref relevant. But you can see there for the description that uh, quickly allowed me to, to sort in some uh, certain order there. And uh, so that's, well, we'll just go back to the date order. So you pretty much, uh, I'm sure you got that. Across the top, we have uh, a number of column headings. So let's explore those. Date, it's self-explanatory. Pay, this will be the contact within the business. Uh, the reference, this may be a reference. Doesn't look like we have any reference there. But maybe a receipt number or a purchase order number or uh, a reference to the person who you're associated with when you are doing this. When you are doing this. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Um, then we have uh, the description. So this is actually the description of the transaction. The next column along is the account. So this is where you allocate the general ledger account or the chart of account option. The next column along 
is the tax rate and I think that uh, for none of it that has popped up so you can go through and put in the relevant tax rate but once you have actually selected the chart of account or the general ledger code in the previous column the default tax rate will come through. The next column, if you're looking at your own, you may not actually have this next column, but this is a tracking column here, and we have tracking set up under settings, and that is, uh, that is um, the option that you can see here, and if I click on the, uh, if I click in there, it will only have the options that have uh, been set up in that area there. Finally, we have in this uh, sort of shaded area what has been spent and what has been received and we cannot edit that. That is uneditable and the date information is also uneditable. So the information that has come through from the transaction is not editable. If I go to the very far right hand side I have another two options uh, this forward slash in a box if I click on oh, oh, oh well, I didn't mean to do that if I click on this forward slash in the box it's a bit slippy there it brings up the spend money window and from here I can actually uh, put in further information and split out the transaction so if not a simple single line transaction I can go in here and split out the transaction I'm going to click cancel there Finally, at the far right-hand side, I have a cross which highlights red, which typically uh, in zero, whenever you see red, it indicates we're about to delete something. And if I click on that, that would allow me or enable me to delete it. So let's, let's have a look. We've got 17th of August. We've got uh, zero. We spent $53.90 with them. So let's go through and fill in the information. I'm going to tab through, tab through, and my reference will uh, be, uh, I'll just put in monthly, and I'll put in monthly subscription. I'll put in the account. I'm actually typing in the word subscription, and that has also popped up for me. The tax code has uh, defaulted and popped up, and I'm not going to link that to a consultant. And um, we can see here that little side area has popped off. If I expand it a bit more, I don't seem to still be able to. Oh, there, I've, I've been able to tick on it and access that area. And I can come down and click on Save and Reconcile Selected. So I've actually uh, reconciled that account by actually putting the information in about that account to actually reconcile it. So what I also want to highlight to you are some further extension with the shortcut keys. These options are available in all edited fields, typically in all edited fields, except for the description area. So, oh, I'm going to get rid of these ones. See, isn't accounting exciting? And I'm going to bring across these ones here. If I use the shift and down arrow, this ticks the current row and moves down to the next one. So if I click here, uh, if I click here and see how that goes, shift and down, that ticked that row. Huh, so that's interesting. Tick that row, giving it the option um, to be reconciled. And let's give me a look at another option I have here. If I use the plus key, it copies the account, tax rate and tracking from the row above into the current row. So I'm just going to untick those ones there. And let's go here into account and we'll type in oh, rent, rent, or oh, the tax rate automatically popped up. Uh, let's put in Victoria property agent, we'll go, oh, maybe this is our St Kilda office. And... Uh, let's use the plus key. So I'm here and I'm going to use the uh, plus key, shift plus. Ah, so that's interesting. 
So that allowed me to very quickly um, allocate that there, which obviously for those ones is incorrect, um, but uh, probably would have been more appropriate for us to have grabbed the uh, petrol and have called it mobile and called it petrol. Or maybe we have maybe you have travel travel in there, travel national, and then if I go shift plus travel national select that option there and then if I go shift plus and it still overrode it obviously didn't like that travel national pop over here shift plus ah because I did it while I have that one selected above so I actually need to go to the one below and go shift plus because it kept grabbing the line above rather than that particular line and I cannot see all of that, so I can actually expand there to actually further see what the account has been there and what the description has been. Now, the other uh, option here is if I use the forward key, it opens a quick spend or receive money window so you can split the transaction. So I have the forward key here. Let's see if I uh, use it on my keyboard. Oh, not there. Hopping back into Melbourne Mags, forward key, excellent. Opens up the spend money window and let's do a receive. Let's go into mobile, opens up the receive money window. That's sensational. So that is a uh, really quick way for me to uh, be transacting, entering my transactions here. And finally, I have another option here. Remember these options are for everything that you, pretty much everything that you uh, do in Xero. Alt down, Alt down arrow um, changes the proper case of a payee that's names have been entered all in uh, capital letters. So do we have anyone sitting there in capital letters? Well, let's go in and change uh, DISR, which is actually correct. Um, but let's change him. Alt down arrow. And so if I go Alt, Alt down, and that changed it like that. And I wonder if Alt, Alt, Alt up doesn't capitalize it, just your Alt down uh, changes that. So if I um, highlight all of those, uh, I need them to be up. If I highlight all of those, uh, that just quickly shows you some various options there in terms of reconciling. And if I um, now, if I just uh, click on this screen here, and um, I think that has highlighted all the areas that you can go here. We can click all. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention. If I have this option here, I'm going to untick that. Discard changes. So if I actually click on discard changes. That D-I-S-S-R has, look at that, if I highlight that, that D-I-S-S-R has capitalised, not sure which one it was, but there, but it has reverted to the capital formation of that, so you can see there's another D-I-S-R, so that's sensational, so you can go through quickly and choose those options there, save and reconcile all, quick way for you to go in and reconcile, um, and we um, seem to be seeing most of them here. The other thing I wanted to mention from a previous uh, area I worked on, that down over here on the left-hand side, uh, I put in a query. I put in a discussion note, and that discussion note is actually there. So I have come along as the uh, person to code the transactions, and I can see, oh, someone's left me a discussion note, and the discussion note was Heather... Uh, was this a personal expense, and I have the, now have the opportunity to allocate it accordingly. Sensational. So, my name is Heather Smith. Uh, if you're interested in visiting me, visit... Uh, Visit me at heathersmithsmallbusiness.com for further information and uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video.